We're going to install the aileron servos first, uh, but we'll need to get this set up. Uh, and as I stated before, you can use your radio system with your ESC and your radio uh, to get the, uh, the servo centered, uh, or you can use one of these servo testers uh, or servo drivers like this. Well, we have a very inexpensive but very, uh, very good uh, and very useful uh, servo tester. Uh, it's uh, product number S is SAM 3T. Uh, you can find it on our website. Uh, you just simply plug a battery in here. I'm going to go to the centering portion and we're going to plug in the servo. Alright, that's going to get the. Oops, let's change that back to center. That's going to get our servo centered. And my servo is going to uh, sit like this on the wing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to place my arm. Now I use the what they call the 90 degree or single sided arm. Uh, you can use the others and, and cut off one side. So I'm going to place that just like that. I'm going to go ahead and install the screw. And you're going to need to use a 564th or roughly 2 millimeter uh, drill. Uh, you can use either a hand drill like one of these or, or you can just use the drill bit itself. It's so small. Now you generally use about down the, about the second hole or so. I'll drill a hole. Let's tighten this up a little bit here. And then what I do is so that I can have some adjustment, I come up and I drill the second hole out from the bottom as well. All right, that's that. Let's get it installed. All right, so what I'm going to do is, uh, there's no exact science to this. Uh, you just don't want your servo too close to the arm. Uh, you'll get a very uneven uh, angle on there and you want your angle as level as you can. So generally what I do is I come up and I take this little horn or this little uh, the, the mounting horn on the edge of it and I line that right up with the carbon fiber rod and all I do is I eyeball the line right there uh, straight to the uh, the control horn and I just make a mark. Let me grab my pin here. make a mark so I got a reference line and all I'm going to do is I'm going to drop one spot of hot glue right there on the back match it back up with my lines and hold that till it dries all right it's time to get the control linkages on what I'm going to do is I'm going to slip the end on the horn here and then I'm going to take Hold this level, and I'm going to take my Sharpie marker. I'm going to mark exactly dead center of the hole there. I'm going to show you two different ways. First way I'm going to show you is uh, with our Z bend pliers. Um, we do sell those uh, in our shop and online. And what you'll do is you'll basically line that up right where the Z is going to be, the mark you made and give it a squeeze. Cut you out a perfect little Z bend. So all you got to do is come back about, a, back up about a quarter of an inch, trim that off. And what we're going to do is we're going to slide this. Oh, I wanted to show you one other thing real quick. The reason I mentioned the fuel tubing earlier, um, to keep these uh, clevises closed, although they do snap shut and more than likely they're going to stay shut. I do like to take a small thin piece of fuel tubing, just a tiny piece. You can even see that. I'm going to slide this up on here before I install it. and I'll show you in a minute how I use that. Uh, you can also use this uh, one of the zip ties to keep that closed as well. Fuel tubing just happens to be a little easier. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to slide this in Make my Z-bend around, bring this down, install it on the horn, I'm going to slide my fuel tubing up over that. And what that'll do is that will make sure that this stays completely closed. If you can get the fuel tubing up there, there we go. 
And once the horn comes against it, the fuel tubing gives a little bit, so it doesn't. Uh, there's no binding issues whatsoever. All right, on this side, I'm going to show you how to do it with just a pair of needle nose. We're going to, same thing. Uh, hook it onto your control horn there. Uh, hold your wing level. Oops, there we go. Mark center. What we're going to do is we're going to pop this off here. And the same, same principle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to generally grab right at the center point. So if you can see, I've got the my mark dead center of my pliers. I'm going to fold this over one time like this, and then fold this over one time like this. Okay, so that's going to give me my Z bend. Now the Z bend uh, is not going to be as neat, uh, and it will not be as tight, uh, but it will serve its purpose. All right, we're going to go ahead and install these elevator and rudder servos. Now, these are going to be a little bit different. Instead of surface mounting them, uh, you can, but they're going to stick out just a little bit. So what we're going to do is we're going to notch these out uh, and recess them into the fuselage. So all you need to do is just lay it up there. I generally line it up with the curvature of the wing right where it ends. It's a great spot for it. What that does is that gives you the full use, um, or I'm sorry, the full length of the rod um, here so that you have plenty of wire and don't have to use extensions to come back uh, to your receiver. So all you do is just press it up against the fuselage, make your cut marks there, cut marks on the back side. Alright, with a sharp hobby knife, all we're going to do is we're just going to cut this out. And we're going to repeat the same process in a minute for the uh, elevator, but what we're going to do is we're going to stagger it exactly the distance um, of one servo off. All right, you're going to repeat the same process, like I said, one quarter inch up uh, for the elevator, and that completes the servo install. All right, now what we're going to do is we're going to, uh, I'm going to power up the throttle, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to check for the proper rotation. Um, I want this thing, if, if I'm looking at the front here, to be going in a counter rotation prop, or if I was sitting in the uh, pilot seat, I want it going in a uh, uh, clockwise uh, rotation. So we are actually going in a clockwise this way, so I need to reverse any two of these uh, in order for the uh, prop to turn the right way. So I'm just going to unplug two of these, swap these out, plug them back in, give it another test. Perfect. The front here and along the back, I just run a simple popsicle stick. I just simply glue that down. Uh, and what that does is I don't always land on, uh, you know, smooth, nice grass. And sometimes it'll want to pick the foam. Uh, or if you ever come down on concrete or asphalt, uh, it's going to want to chip the foam up a little bit there. So all this does is this gives me a nice, uh, nice protection against that. All right, guys, that completes the build of our Grayson Hobby Sequoia, so be sure to visit us at GraysonHobby.com for this plane and any of the products that I've mentioned during these videos, and also subscribe that way you'll be informed of our upcoming videos. Thanks a lot. On this side, I'm going to show you how to do it uh, with just a pair of needle nose. If I can find my marker. There it is. Any of the products I've mentioned during these past few videos, blah, 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 blah. Grayson Hobby Sequoia. Uh, for any of the products that I've mentioned during this video, please visit us. Visit it. Visit us. Visit us. What word? All right, guys. That concludes the build of our Grayson Hobby Sequoia. Another show. Thanks.